Hey guys, this is Substitute Tover. Today we're driving the 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLS 580. This SUV has been facelifted for 2024. We also got a slight power bump. Our four liter bi-turbo V8 with mild hybrid now makes 510 horsepower and 538 pound-feet of torque. And remaining the same, power is still sent to all four wheels via a nine-speed automatic transmission. Let's walk you around this facelifted GLS. We'll take it for a drive, tell you what it's been like to live with this week. I always love living with Mercedes Benzes and especially the luxury flagship SUV and especially, especially one in a spec like this. Emerald green over Baia brown. This is definitely a looker. You guys saw our newly revised headlight and grill. We'll loop back around and show you again. We also have new taillights on this new GLS 580. You can see we also have the towing pack on this SUV, rated to tow 7,700 pounds. We have a four corner air suspension with adaptive dampers. We have 22 inch AMG wheels on this GLS. 285 section tire up front, and I wanna say a 325, excuse me, it's a 285 section out back as well. That is because we are on some Pirelli snow tires today. As this car comes from the factory, with this package, we would have a slightly wider tire on the back, but we are in winter mode today. This car also has the night package, which blacks out our window trim and some other pieces around the car. Give you a better look at this revised front end. I think it looks nice. It's a bit more commanding. The grill is just massive and we have double Mercedes emblems, of course. Gotta have that. This 2024 GLS 580 starts at $112,000. This one as spec is about 124 grand. So it ain't cheap, but uh, you'll see why when we walk around it and we take it for a drive. This is a three row SUV. Let's show you the cargo space and then we'll sit in the third row. We'll sit in the second row. We'll make our way up to the front. Power lift gate, of course, and we also have power folding third row seats. Let's pop that down. We'll show you how these work. Little toggle, or I guess just regular switches here on the right hand side. I never remember which way I'm supposed to hit them. There we go. You push it to, to fold it down. There it goes. Okay. See, this is the problem with power third row seats is if these were manual, I would have just pulled the cord and it would have been down in half a second. But Whatever, that's neither here nor there. On a luxury SUV, you can always expect to have power folding third row seats. Cargo space back here is pretty nice, even with the third row seats folded up. I have actually been living with this car this week. I've put over 200 miles on it and uh, I have taken things in and out of it. And it does have just enough room behind here to hold your groceries or whatever else. Bit more storage underneath the floor. You can see that goes back a bit. It is kind of a deep compartment. We've got a toolkit here as well. We also have this tiny little privacy shade, which you can disconnect if you have the third row down and you can put it up there as well to cover the entire um, cargo area back here. Let's go sit in those third row seats and see what our room is like. I'm gonna enter on this side because I don't wanna mess up my driving position as it does move the seats as everything in here is power. We've got a switch on our second row seat do one long hold and it will complete the process by itself here. There we go. Clap our feet off and we'll hop back into this third row. We have these little baby floor mats back here. We'll go ahead and get our headrest pushed up so I can actually come out so I can actually sit back here. There we go. And we will put this seat back by now you guys may understand what i mean about uh power seats in the second and third row just being a little bit overkill anyways though here we are we're sat in the third row as far as amenities go back here cup holder on each side two usb c ports on each side which is pretty nice this is that attachment for the cargo cover that i was just telling you about Set behind a pretty normal seating position for the second row. I'm five foot 11. I've got plenty of leg room and plenty of headroom. In my opinion, it takes an SUV of this size, of this stature, 
to even have a usable third row for adults. Anything smaller, it's kind of just a waste of time in my opinion. So here's our third row. We'll hop out and we will test out the second row. Soft closed doors, of course, on this Mercedes GLS. We'll hop around to the driver's side to test out the second row so you guys can see leg room behind my seating position. Ingress, egress, pretty nice. Lot of leg room, of course, here in this second row. We've got good adjustability here with our second row seats, of course, like any other Mercedes. Power switches are on the door. We have power headrests. And these are heated as well. We have our switch right here on the door panel. We have a 29 speaker Burmester sound system in this GLS. It's about a $4,500 option. And uh, well, that really adds to the experience and I'm excited to show you all that later as well. We'll do a bit of a sound system test. We have a climate control panel in the back here. I've got climate turned off right now because the fans, when they're in auto, they kind of make a racket. Um, but that is nice to have. We have vents. We have a couple different sized cup holders here. And this is, of course, the six passenger arrangement here. Uh, you can also have a bench seat in the second row of your GLS if you would like. Let's take a look at our dashboard up here. Cool. Okay, let's pop the hood. We'll show you this four liter by turbo, which is Mercedes' way of saying twin turbo. V8, and then we will hop up front, show you the infotainment, we'll hop on the road. There it is, you can see our turbos right there in the middle and a pretty attractive engine bay, kind of just a blank sheet of plastic. Somewhat the same engine as, you know, the four liter that you find in some of the AMG products and even the Aston Martin DBX. The only difference with those is they are hand built and signed by somebody who's built them. This is kind of just the basic version, but still packs plenty of a punch. And I love a good V8. V8s are so underrated. I hope they stay around for a little bit. Not a huge fan of these running boards. Uh, all they really do is get the back of your leg wet when you get out of the car while it's raining. And if this were my car, I would probably take them off. Inside, lots more of that Baya Brown, a good look. And most importantly, most notably rather, is this new steering wheel. Now this is not a new steering wheel to Mercedes in general, but it is new to the GLS for the facelift in 2024. I'm a fan of this wheel, especially this optional wood trimmed wheel. It is heated as well. The one thing I don't like about it is the airbag cover in the middle. In my opinion, if I'm paying $124,000, for a luxury SUV, this should be leather wrapped. It's kind of just a scratchy plastic that looks like it would be in a Mercedes Sprinter van. So not a big fan of that. However, in every other regard, they've done a fantastic job trimming this interior. Everything feels nice. Everything minus this and the bottom of the door panel here is wrapped in leather. So I've got about a 90% coverage for leather. We've got a gray headliner in this car. I would probably prefer a black, but that is just my personal preference. We have this brown deviated stitching that goes all the way around the dashboard into our door panels. And we have this nice open pour matte wood along the dash with our quad vents, our physical climate control panel. Slide the door open to reveal a wireless charger, heated and cooled cup holders. So lots of cool little luxury touches in here. I like when you can kind of just hide everything away and have a clean look. Pretty typical Mercedes infotainment. If you guys are watching this video, you probably all have already seen this system. It works very nicely. We have wireless Apple CarPlay, which I have connected. Connects nicely every time you get in. I haven't had any disconnect issues this week. We have a touchpad down here if you would prefer to use that instead of a touchscreen. And I've got to say, I like having multiple ways to use infotainments, especially when you're driving. You don't have to reach forward and be as distracted. You can just let rest your wrist on this brown color matched little pad and control everything that way. Now, I mentioned a four corner air suspension. We have a toggle right here to raise or lower the car if you'd like to do that manually. You also have a dynamic select button for our drive modes, comfort sport, individual, and off-road. 
If you put it in off-road mode, you will raise the car up. If you put it in sport mode, you will lower the car down and it is doing that currently. And it also politely tells you that you are not allowed to be in sport mode if you have a roof box. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. We'll start today's drive in comfort. Normal Mercedes gauge cluster as well, and we'll be quick. I know we've been walking around this thing for forever. But in typical Mercedes fashion, you can switch through all of these different menus with our haptic touch buttons on this new steering wheel. Lots of different modes. We'll probably stick with classic. It's my favorite for these Mercedes cars. So I mentioned that I do like this steering wheel. The only disadvantage of this new steering wheel is all these haptic touch buttons, but I feel like they've gotten them a little bit more dialed in. They seem to work a little bit better now. They're more intuitive, and I haven't been frustrated with these. Additionally, we have a volume slider. They have not completely ditched a physical volume control in this GLS. Button for our parking cameras, 360 camera, as well as this cool 3D little action right here. Looks pretty dang accurate to the outside environment, which in today's setting is very boring and industrial. All right, that's enough. Let's take this thing for a drive and we'll talk about what it's like on the road. Column shifter, push up, puts you into reverse. Very, very light and silky and gooey steering in this GLS 580 when you're in comfort mode, when you're daily driving. And I wanna get this out of the way right away. That to me is, it might be the most important thing in a big luxury SUV like this is having a nice light but crisp steering feel. This is a very quick rack in this GLS. Makes you feel very important maneuvering around shopping centers. And it is important to be able to maneuver something uh, of this stature, almost a 6,000 pound SUV. Got to make sure you're not running curbs over. Very nice progressive throttle response on this GLS. While we're waiting for this traffic to clear, I want to mention one of the packages we have in this car that ups our MSRP to 124 grand, and that is the Acoustic Comfort Package. Those semis driving by would have been much louder if we didn't have that package, and that is due to a sort of laminated acoustic glass that is supposed to make things quieter. Um, and also, it protects you from the sun because it has this membrane layered over it or, or something. And then we also have extra sound deadening in our doors, under our carpet, everything like that to make this GLS just that much quieter. And that's only an $1,100 package, so I think that is a box I would tick. What I love about these Mercedes SUVs or any Mercedes with air suspension is how they're able to just tune out the body roll. I first felt this on the GLS 600 Maybach that we were driving a couple of years ago, and I was blown away at the suspension tuning, and it's the same here in this GLS 580. Lots of torque, and in my opinion, just the perfect power level for this platform. I know you don't always have to associate speed with luxury, but it's nice to have something this big that can get out of its own way. You could also have the GLS with an inline six. You can have it as a Maybach, and you can also have it as a GLS 63 AMG. All of the top trims use a version of this four liter V8, and uh, the GLS 450 or whatever has an inline six. And beyond the mitigation of body roll, the ride here is just fantastic. This is a car that if you have a long morning commute would just be the best companion. It's so cozy, it's so floaty yet controlled. It's almost like, hold on. Excellent passing power here. What was I saying? It's almost like that slime that if you run across it, you don't sink in, but if you slowly walk across, you do. 
So if you're in a high speed situation, it isn't sketchy, but what I love about this car is when you're just trying to relax, you are able to do so. Bit of a weird analogy, so I'm sorry for that. All right, let's try some cornering here. Let's see what our body rolls like. Wow. Give it a boot full out of the corner. Let's do that again, but let's do it in sport mode. If you'd like, you can take manual control of your nine speed automatic with your steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. Give you a nice click. This four liter makes a pretty good noise as well. these cars a little bit of room in case they take this corner. Nice feel through that brake pedal. A little bit of noise there from our snow tires. chassis is nice. It's dialed in on this car. I always love when you can kind of hustle a big SUV, but then you can switch the dial down into comfort mode and it just soaks everything back up. That section of road, I know it's hard to tell in this car, is extremely rough and I barely even jiggled going over that. drop up into sport mode and I want to show you how this GLS 580 gets off the line because I know I said 510 horsepower 538 pound-feet of torque but it feels like it wheelies when it takes off so we'll give you a little taste of that here let's turn off our auto start stop and we're gonna brake boost it here it'll control the revs I'll let it build boost and then we'll let go And that's 60 in about four seconds. <laughs> right. 6,000 pound SUV. <laughs> that doesn't get old. I've done that a few times. When the tires are super cold, it will spin the front wheels when it lifts off, which is just hysterical. Not quite as entertaining as the G-Wagon, which also shares powertrain with, uh, with this SUV, but it's dang close. EPA rates this thing at 14 city, 20 highway. Let's see what we've been getting this week. Well, today we've been getting 10, but uh, we've been getting just about 18 this week. So a nice average there, 17.7 over the last 300 miles. And that counts the drive of the delivery driver bringing this thing to me. I've done somewhere in the mid 200s myself. This thing's got 4,000 miles on it, and honestly, it's held up well, which I know sounds silly. It's a Focus RS. Uh, I know that sounds silly, but some of these cars that we drive, we get them with 4,000 miles on them, and 4,000 journalist miles, very different than 4,000 miles by the same loving, caring owner. just a nice car. Um, the Topher is in Puerto Rico this week, which 
is why I'm bringing you guys this review and not him. Normally I'm driving some 20 year old clapped out thing from a used car lot, but uh, today I get the pleasure of driving this very nice SUV. Uh, and the reason I bring this up is because I've had both of our press cars at the same time this week, this and the new Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport, which is actually a very nice SUV and I was not expecting that. Um, but I have still elected to drive this every single day of the week because it is just so fantastic. It's so buttery. It's satisfying to get in and out of. It's satisfying to drive. The steering weight is perfect. Feel our brakes for Matco tools. Yeah, brakes feel great. I've had absolutely zero miss shifts from this nine speed automatic. Ooh, the GMC truck is kind of hustling. Love it. <laughs> all right let's get it up to highway speeds and we will show you all our cruise control there we go so we have steering assist here in this gls we also have adaptive cruise all of that is controlled from the left hand side of the steering wheel you can swipe down for a single mile an hour increment or decrease and you can push for a five mile an hour. So I can push twice and be back down to 60 mile an hour here for our 55 section road. This does a pretty good job of keeping you in the lines when uh, left to control things by itself. It'll do lane changes for you. Very good. All right, it lets you go for quite a while before it yells at you to put your hands back on the wheel. As far as competition in this segment goes, it's tough to say because the main two competitors to this car are the BMW X7 and the big boy Range Rover. And all day I'd have this over the Range Rover. The BMW X7 is a very, very close, in my opinion, second place to this car. And that's because the X7 isn't as focused on comfort. And I understand that that isn't for everybody. Um, you know, having something like this being focused so much on comfort, you may not prefer that. And for that, you'd want to go and have the BMW X7. For me though, if I'm having a big three row flagship SUV, I want it to be as cushy and cozy as possible. And Mercedes has set that in their sights. And that's kind of, you know, where they've always been. The rivalry between BMW and Mercedes Benz, it's there, but you know, BMW is always focused a little bit more on handling and driving characteristics. Not to say that this Mercedes is not excellent to drive, but if you're someone that wants to go spiritedly drive your three row SUV, have the X7. If you're someone that just wants to float down the highway, be massaged, be heated and cooled at the same time, then maybe you want to go for this GLS 580. All right, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and queue up our sound system test song, and we'll play around with some of our audio settings with this 29 speaker Burmester sound system.
we also have this other setting called personal sound profile and you can kind of adjust how you want your music to sound between bassy, intensive, speechy, or brilliant. So play around with some of those. I tend to like mine in the upper right quadrant, bassy and intensive. I think that suits our sound system test song nicely. So as you guys heard, this is one of the most fabulous sound systems fitted to anything in the new car market. I think Burmester and Bowers and Wilkins kind of have things just about perfect. The Bowers and Wilkins in the Volvo cars blow me away but so do the Burmester systems here in the Mercedes cars. And I think this 29 speaker here in this GLS might be the best one there is. It's absolutely fantastic. So with that being said, why don't we give you some final thoughts here on this Mercedes GLS? Well, I feel like I've kind of summed it up throughout this whole video. This thing has just been an absolute treat to live with this week. I have no real complaints other than give me some leather on this airbag cover. Um, since I'm, you know, looking at it every single time I get into the car. But I mean, otherwise, I don't really think there's anything I would change about this. I think the facelift looks great. They haven't gone overboard. And, you know, we'll have a few years with this and then they'll completely redesign it. But this may be a really nice sweet spot for this GLS because with this facelift, we still have physical controls. We still have a physical volume knob. We still have an infotainment that works very well. For that, I'd certainly recommend it. If you want a big luxury SUV, but you also wanna you know, hit some crazy corners or go and blast 200 miles an hour, maybe you should have an Alpina XB7 or uh, the GLS 63. But this for me is a nice sweet spot. I think this is the right trim to have on the GLS because I don't know that I would love an inline six with this car, I think the V8 just makes sense with this platform. So have yourself a GLS 580. I would if I had $124,000, I think. Well, I'd probably just go and lease one for what, what $2,000 a month or something. Or like $4,000 a month since the year is now 2024 and everything's much more expensive than it used to be. I guess the only other thing that I would say is I don't love the auto start stop. And that's a common theme with European cars and cars with mild hybrid systems, which this is both. Um, you can see it shuts off. I'm going seven miles an hour and the car shuts off. But what I don't like about it most is when you're actually stopped. Oh, a minute now, it's not gonna shut off. Well, what I was gonna demonstrate is it doesn't immediately turn back on when you take your foot off the brake as quickly as I think it should. There's about a second delay, which when the light turns green, you just wanna go. You don't always wanna be waiting around for the car to turn back on. So two very small complaints with this thing, but otherwise it's it's fabulous. Mercedes, this is, this is what Mercedes does best. You can really see where they're investing their money in the GLS, the GLE, the S-Class, um, these big ICE, luxury barges, the flagships. This is what Mercedes does best. This is what you should have if you're after the peak Mercedes experience. Cool. Well, let's walk you around this thing one last time and uh, that'll be it for today. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Hey, remember your phone. She says that. She has a couple different ways of saying that actually. So it's not the same thing every time so it doesn't drive you nuts. What do you guys think? Do you like the facelift? Do you prefer the pre-facelift? What's your favorite gen of GL slash GLS Mercedes? I think that this new generation is gonna be our peak design for this GLS. Looks fantastic. All right, cool. Well, that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you guys again so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.